because in my other world, in the, in the secular times, when Petra's out there knocking down doors, I was in the secular side having it easy. And, um, uh, but in that world, um, you don't, you're not sober. I mean, you're not sober, you're not straight, you're not anything. <laughs> you're just, you do like everybody else does. And, and by that time, 1980, I was a vegetable. But that's how I went on stage. Six pack of beer, walk on stage, do my thing, come back, do the drugs that I was, you know, always did, and and uh, until the next day. And walking on stage that night sober, I was actually fearful. I wasn't sure if I could do what I'd been do doing normally for years as a sober artist. The cool part of it is you get to watch kids come forward. Not kids, their parents. No, they're, that's their grandparents. You get you get to watch people come forward and. Not only have you had a fantastic time, but the whole thing ends up to a, a life-changing, eternal uh, event. That is mm -hmm. so cool. You tell, you show me a secular band that has that kind of thrill, and I'll show you a band that is probably Christian anyway. I mean, it, it's the only way it can be. It's just so exciting. It started with the Petra Praise record, something that we we did on our own. Mm -hmm. And it was actually the only way it was going to come out is if we signed with with Word, and it was sort of like a signing bonus. Okay, you sign with us, we'll put this record out for you. And the reason for Petra Praise is we'd been as we were touring, we had these youth pastor conferences, and every time we would have them, they said we need some youth rock worship music. We kept hearing that, and we were looking, and there wasn't very much out there. So we did that more as not an agenda to have a. Of album product out there. It was more of a service to the Christian youth community so they could have some worship what's, and it would be more right. What's funny was the record, the, rich, the, the Praise and Worship record was actually just a sample. The whole idea was to put out a CD that had uh, just the music and the, the choir could sing with it. The kids could sing to that music and the CD was just a sample of what it could sound like. And then the record company goes, this sounds great. And they, they put it out, they decided they were going to put out that record plus the package that we originally designed. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the CD just just skyrocketed. Uh, what did it feel like that in 91 when, mm -hmm. uh, when that year we, we won the Grammy for Beyond Belief mm -hmm. and, then, and then the Dove Awards where for the first <laughs> time we were actually treated like we existed. And oh. it, uh, it, it was, it, it was like, oh, something's happening. It happened. was an honor. It was, See, it was a blessing. And what's funny is uh, Garmin Key and us used to have this joke. We were the most nominated, most nominated, <laughs> non-winnest no, non non bands. Oh, in it's true. We, Eddie we wanted, DeGarmo used to always yeah, say Yeah, we that. wanted to have our own category. Most most nominated non winnest band for 19, you know. Was, and <laughs> and so we sat there, and, and we were nominated five times. There was five nominations for us that night, that year. And uh, we got four out of the five. And the fifth one, I uh, still think we should have got that one too. Anyway, uh, but... <laughs> But after, be grateful. I remember the first time, with the first nomination, we got, and, we, and we got the the Dove first time ever. We walked up and uh, somebody in the Eddie goes, Eddie DeGarmo. He goes, no, we said to Eddie, Eddie, we can't be in the club anymore. <laughs> and which, and then it just kept. I mean, we just one, it just kept walking up there. And then when we got, and the last one we got was Artist of the Year, and that was. I think that was probably the shock. the, the oh. biggest honor that we'd ever had because no Christian, ba no band had ever been nominated, even nominated as Artist of the Year, but to win Artist of the Year over all the the, the Sandy Patties, the Amy Grants, the all these all the, these great wonderful talented oh, people it was a shock. It was it was absolutely uh, one of those special nights you never forget, and. Um, did we feel vindicated then? Yes. Absolutely. 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 One of my favorites, I say one, one of my favorites is, is Grave Robber uh, because of the hope that it brings to people that have uh, lost loved ones, which, I, I, you know, so many of us have lost loved ones along the way. And to realize that because of that hope and the scripture makes it plain, you know, this, we're going to see them again on the other side of the veil. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably one of my, it touches me the most. Now, they're the part I love to rock, Judas Kiss, 
you know, <laughs> beat the system. Uh, there's just a whole bunch of other ones. But as far as the hope of just stirring my, of eternity, that would be the one that stirs eternity. I second that one. That one for me too. There's, the lyric is just has such a hope. And uh, when I think of all the songs, that one just really moves me. I was just looking at the lyrics the other day, and it was, it was just, it, it's one of those songs that is just so victorious. And, uh, and in hard times, you, and you know, in your own family, your own events, you, you lean back on that song. And I know I personally have yeah. a couple times. The song, I, I, it's hard for me just to pick one. If you want a rocker, mm -hmm. Beyond Belief. If you want a slow song, it would be, oh my gosh, maybe No Doubt or Love or Prayer. I'll say Prayer because this was when, we prayer. Did it, when we did that, it live, that's a, that's when we did it live, it just was, when I sang it, it was just every night, it was, I, I was singing to God every night. It didn't matter whether we had 6,000 people or 600. I was, it was singing to God. The passion, I think, is what in, in you, the passion that you have to do this. And you couldn't do it unless God gave you that. Mm -hmm. And that comes with that calling, I believe. Yep, absolutely. And then, of course, the, the reward is that you feel the, the Father saying, good son, that, that's right. And that's like the amen from the Holy Spirit. Um, without that, you could not do that. Otherwise, it'd just be works, and it would become so dead that you you would quit. And the fact that it's still, you know, we're still doing what we do, has to attest to the fact that it is a true a true gift and a true passion that the Lord put in our hearts. And we thank God for that. Mm -hmm. He gave us the talents, guided us through, uh, really just guided us through to where we get this chance to do it. And and. Uh, uh, it's very cool. I mean, we didn't have to use uh, the, I mean, Gray didn't have to use his voice. I didn't have to use my voice. John didn't have to use his amazing talents with the keyboards to, to worship the Lord. But the neat thing is he allowed us to. He allowed us to. And that's, that is, yeah. you can't do better than that. Mm -hmm. I guess I've been sort of, I, I've seen a lot of changes, especially in the last seven years. And people ask that all the time. I mean, why, why do you call yourself Petra? Because we're still the same. We are ministry first. It doesn't matter who's in the band, as long as that band's good. Because we are calling ourselves a Christian rock band. We better be the best rock band we possibly can be because we're doing it as unto him. But who, who's in the band at the time? Who cares? Uh, as long as the ministry was put first, that's the common denominator. I think Petra's greatest accomplishment is to have been a band a ministry for 33 years and still have a good reputation. Still be thought of well because I value that probably more than anything else about Petra. Uh, we have felt that we are representatives of Christ and we are doing PR for Jesus Christ. And I hope that he thinks we've done a good job and that we will hear well done from him.